As the world becomes more and more focused on the struggles between Israel and Palestine, along with discussions of which religion is the most blessed by God, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are usually the most discussed and debated. All claim to have one common denominator, the patriarch Abraham. Abraham was made to wander the land of Canaan, where he was promised by God to have a child where his descendants would be as numerable as the stars, that his seed would inherit the land, and that through him would all nations be blessed. Genesis 17 verses 7 to 8 And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Abraham had two sons that came from him, Isaac and Ishmael. Judaism views Abraham as the father of many nations, but through Isaac, the son of Sarah, Abraham's wife, came the nation of Israel. Christianity follows suit, but also sees Abraham as an essential figure in the lineage of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. It should be noted when talking about Christianity that in the New Testament it shows the fulfillment of Genesis 17 verses 7 to 8 completely found in Jesus Christ, as shown in Galatians 3 verse 16. But Isaac is in that lineage from him to Abraham, so this passage is still very much connected with Isaac. Islam sees Abraham as incredibly important as well, but with a twist. Ishmael, the son of Hagar, is the child of promise. Now many in Islam say this due to the consensus given by Muslim scholars, sheikhs, and imams. What most Muslims don't know, however, is that at no point Ishmael is ever referred to as the child of promise, not only in the Bible, but also in the Quran. If we were to turn to the Quran, there are multiple instances where Isaac is called promised, but fails to give any example of where Ishmael was. The truth of the matter is that Hagar was initially Sarah's handmaid, but had given Abraham her to be his wife for a child because of Sarah's inability to conceive, which this account is detailed in Genesis 16. This was not something that the Lord commanded both Abraham and Sarah to do, and in this they demonstrated a lack of faith in the fulfillment of God's promises to them. After this, in Genesis 18, the Lord came down to visit Abraham and Sarah, where God promised them that Sarah would finally have her son. After she gave birth to Isaac, we find in Genesis 21 something important to consider about Ishmael, Isaac, and the covenant promised. Genesis 21 verses 9 to 12. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Here we see God agreeing with Sarah in this moment, 
where she not only tells Abraham to cast out the bondwoman, but explicitly emphasizes that Ishmael will not be heir with Isaac. This shows that the promises that were specifically made to Isaac would not be shared with Ishmael, despite how Muslims might feel about this. This passage is repeated again in Galatians 4 verse 30. So this is still very much a New Testament position. Now in Genesis 17 verse 20 it reads, And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But in the very next verse it reads, But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Ishmael was blessed, but in no way, shape, or form does that make Ishmael a co-heir with Isaac. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and if he made an everlasting covenant through Isaac, which includes the right to the land of Israel, you're going against God when you say otherwise. In conclusion for our Muslim friends, stop trying to make Ishmael something he is not. It's not respectful to Abraham and neither is it respectful to God.